Good morning and welcome as we gather here on this fifth Sunday of Lent, as we gather together, even though we are separated from each other, we are all together united in Christ Jesus our Lord, so welcome. As we also join together as many congregations, as Central, as Dramon Lutheran, and as Shepherd of the Valley, we gather together in these times and sharing the Word of God together. So today we have a special worship, a service of the word for healing. Um, you may access the bulletin for today's service. It's also on the same webpage that you're viewing right now. And so when we get to that, you may make the sign of the cross of healing as we pray for healing for ourselves and as we gather for this healing of the world in these times. And as we go through this, this time of this pandemic, we are also evaluating and reevaluating our practices each and every week, and we will always keep you informed. Also, for a note of sadness for our community that the death of Greta Schreiner uh, was last Thursday, and so we grieve her passing and, and pray our sympathies to her family. Um, her funeral will be 11 o'clock on Tuesday at the Shenfet Funeral Home. Of course, in these times, it is a private funeral, as only a certain number can gather. And so your cards and your messages to them would be greatly appreciated. So let us begin our worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us confess our sins, as we confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, forgive, forgive us, us, for we, we have, have fallen short of your vision for humanity. humanity. We, we have put ourselves before others, ignored the vulnerable, and forgotten you altogether. We have, have missed the point of your kingdom. kingdom. Have mercy on us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. <clears throat> Children, our God has not forgotten you. Jesus knows your weakness and sees through your presence. You are made whole simply by seeking forgiveness. Receive the Lord's pardon and believe it is true by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we join in our hymn, and if you have it at home, please sing along with us, Children of the Heavenly Father, hymn 781. of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, 
such a refuge there was given. God in his own doth tend and nourish, in his holy courts they flourish. From all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knoweth. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children forsaken is the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. Let us worship the Lord who is enthroned forever, whose name endures for all generations. Nations fear the name of the Lord and, and all its leaders, leaders God's, God's glory. Praise the Lord who answers prayer, whose, whose love endures forever. Let us pray. O Lord, no one on earth knows the hour of your return. Only keep us watchful and awake, that we might always be at work in your kingdom for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so I'd like to welcome all the young children for our children's sermon at this time. And right in here, I have, this is actually a speaker, but it reminds me of something that, was the, that we used to play with when I was a child called the eight ball. And I don't remember exactly how it worked, but you'd kind of push a number and it would sort of tell you your future. So I thought it was pretty cool. And so sometimes in the same way, we take like a Bible reading today where Jesus is talking about perhaps how things are going to end, and it's, it's extremely frightening and scary, just like the times that we're in now. But if we listen to what Jesus says, it always, Jesus is always saying, no matter what happens, I'm always going to be with, with you. And so our future is always with Jesus. Our future is always Easter and resurrection. So I want you to remember that. So if you're at home right now, and you're with your mom and dads, saying, say this to your parents. Mom and dad, my hope is always Easter. Mom and dad, my hope is always Easter. So good to be with you, and I miss you so much, but we'll be together again soon. Thank you. And so our preparation reading for today is from Psalm 102. And again, as we listen to psalms, it's important to just, just to kind of listen. And if a phrase or a set of words captures your imagination, hang on to that and think about it. From Psalm 102. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You rise up and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come, for your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion and he will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayers of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Word of God, word of life. And we join together in our scripture song, Healer of our Every.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumor of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with a great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And when I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you. Amen. So the words and the implications of the words of of Jesus in today's gospel text at first blush are not encouraging words. But then Jesus was a realist. He spoke the truth. He didn't mince words. He didn't shy away from political battles. And as he stood outside this impressive temple in Jerusalem with his disciples. One can envision the disciples looking up at this grand temple, this awesome, magnificent building. Prior to Jesus' birth, Herod the Great began to remodel and rebuild the temple that had stood for more than 500 years. His efforts were not, however, to honor God, but to pacify the Jews. After all, this was their temple, their connection with God. While under the thumb of the Romans, the Jewish people looked to the temple as their place of comfort and hope. But Jesus wasn't all that impressed with the temple. While worshiping God was and is important, worshiping a building was and is not important. And this wasn't Jesus' first visit here to the temple either. In Mark 11, we read that on Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, and he left. On his second visit, we read further on in Mark that Jesus was upset by what was going on inside the temple. And he runs out the buyers and the sellers and the money changers and the profiteers And on his third and final visit to the temple, Jesus warns people to beware of those leaders who are impressed with honoring themselves rather than honoring God, who 
take advantage of their positions and exploit the poor. And it is on this final visit that Jesus observes the woman giving all that she has to the temple treasury. And it is here where we pick up the story today. Jesus is standing outside the temple with his disciples who are standing in awe. And Jesus predicts that this public shrine will be destroyed. And then he launches into a terrifying description of what will take place in the future and ending by saying that this is just the beginning. And the verses that follow, which are not in our text this morning, give even worse news. And if our text ended there, we would be left with little or no hope. Jesus in this text is preparing his followers for what is to come. Be on guard. Be prepared. There will be those who say that they are the Messiah, but don't believe them. But there is a message of hope in this text. As Jesus describes his return, he says with no uncertainty, yes, there will be destruction. Things will change. But me and my promise to you will never change. It will never go away. I will never go away. The pain will end, the anguish will go away, and it will give way to new life. But Jesus also reminds us in this passage to be prepared for that time when he does return. Jesus says that the troubles before the end are only the beginning of the birth pangs. The present pain will give way to new life, to new creation. He promises to return and to gather his chosen from the ends of the earth. And so we watch and we wait not because our salvation depends on it. That is securely in God's hands. But because Jesus has given us a mission. Because he calls us to play a part here and now in the new creation that he is ushering in for us. What we need to hear is how to survive during these end days. What should we do? How can we make it? How can we keep from despairing and living in fear? Well, very simply, we must turn to the words of Jesus. Watch out that no one deceives you. Regardless of how or when it comes about, the day our temple falls is the day our life and our world are forever changed. I'm reminded of the people of Judah as they were forced into exile by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. The people of Judah were forced from their homeland. Their temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. All that was familiar to them had been taken from them. They felt isolated from God. They could no longer look up at the great temple that reminded them of God. They were certain that God had abandoned them. There is uncertainty and instability among them. In our current situation, it might feel like the very foundation that we stand on is shaken. Our current situation isolates us and fragments the unity of life. When we need it most, we are denied the close personal contact that we need. Our voices might tempt us with easy answers and simple explanations. And it might feel like an exile of sorts. Today's words from Jesus are not so much about the end of the world as they are about the end of many worlds. Temples, the great buildings we've created for ourselves. When great buildings begin to shake, the temptation is to fix them up, to strengthen the foundation, and add some more mortar to it, and make it stronger, put it back together. But that's not what Jesus says to do. Our spiritual work in these days is to not be alarmed or afraid. 
but it is to be faithful and not to be led astray, to be watchful, to be present, to be attentive. It is a time of patient waiting. The people of Judah, in time, learned to trust in God, and eventually they were released from the exile and allowed them to return to their homes and to a new life, a life that they once knew. And so it is for us in these trying times. God shows his mercy to every generation. He has compassion for his people and he restores them. No matter how difficult or trying these times might be, we are never far from God's love and mercy. He restores us when we return to him. So I leave you with these things for us to ponder this week. What temples of our lives are falling or need to fall? What new truth or reality is being shown to us even now? And how might God be creating and rebirthing new life in us? Amen. Continue with hymn number 574, Here I Am, Lord. I will go. 
into our service of the word for healing as we seek the healing for ourselves, for those that we love, and for the healing of the world and the healing of the nations. Let us pray, or let us begin. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God, come near, and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing, in the name of Jesus Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. So, sisters and brothers, I invite you to receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. And so we'll take this time to join in singing and make the sign of the cross upon yourself, and if it's okay for you to do it upon members of your family, with these words, receive this oil or receive this cross as a sign of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. And then you respond, amen. We sing while you heal. Bangladesh and India, Taiwan and China, Japan and Hong Kong, North and South Korea, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, Australia, and Iran, Palestine and Israel, Afghanistan, Jordan, Syria and Turkey, for the healing of the nations, we pray to you, O God, for the healing of the nations, we pray to you, Oh God. France and Spain, be yours. Switzerland and Italy, be yours. Romania, Slovenia, be yours. Czech and Slovak Republic, be yours. Russia and Finland, be yours. Austria and Hungary, be yours. Croatia and Estonia, be yours. Latvia and Poland. Norway and Sweden, Peace be Iceland and Denmark, Peace be Netherlands and Germany, Peace be Ireland and England, Peace be For the healing of the nations, we pray to you, O God. For the healing of the nations. We pray to you, O God. South Africa and Angola, Madagascar, Namibia, Botswana, Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Sierra Leone, Central African Republic, Senegal, Liberia, Cameroon, Nigeria, Tanzania, Sudan, Kenya and Congo, Ethiopia, Somalia, Nigeria and Rwanda, for the healing of the nations, we pray to you, O God, for the healing of the nations, we pray to you, O God. Bolivia and Chile, 
Paraguay and Paraguay. Peace be yours. Ecuador, Guyana. Peace be yours. Brazil and Argentina. Peace be yours. Colombia, Venezuela. Peace be yours. Costa Rica, Mexico. Peace be yours. Salvador, Honduras. Peace be yours. Nicaragua, Guatemala. Peace be yours. Greenland and Canada. Peace be yours. Haiti and Jamaica. Peace be yours. United States and Cuba. Peace be yours. All immigrants and exiles. Peace be yours. For the healing of the nation, we pray to you, O God. For the healing of the nations, we pray to you. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, be strengthened, filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Let us pray. Living God, through prayer and our gathering together, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we join in our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Each petition ends, eternal God. We respond together here our prayer. O Lord, we know that there are so many that claim special knowledge of your plan to redeem the earth. Lord, do not let us be led astray, keeping us focused instead upon all the ways you are calling us to live out our discipleship in the here and now, eternal God, hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we take our clues from nature to know what season it is, and we are keenly aware of other people when the time is right to share your word and and mediate your grace and love to them, eternal God. Hear our prayer. And we pray for all in this time of pandemic. Heal those afflicted. Give strength to those whose care care and skills are so life-saving. Comfort those who grieve. Give wisdom to those who govern. And give patience to all who are waiting for this time to pass. Eternal God, hear our prayer. And we ask your healing power upon all those who are dealing with illnesses of all kinds. Send your healing spirit also to those whom we know are suffering especially John Cleavegard and Nick Bolden, and all whom we name before you. Eternal God, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And we give thanks for the lives of those who love us and taught us to believe. We are blessed by the life of Greta Schreiner. And comfort all who grieve her passing as we remember her, and all those saints who showed us the way of faith in you. Eternal God, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. So bless all for whom we pray this day. Keep us alert to the ways you are working in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always and And also also with with you. you. So you may just simply text in the comment box, peace be with you, as we share peace together. And then we will be receiving our offering. And again, during these times of financial stress, Um, Please take care of yourselves and your families. And if you are able, please um, remember giving to God is also the way of life that we practice and also the way that we keep our ministries uh, functioning in in our home congregations. So let us now receive our offering. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My 
chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. <clears throat> T'was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. The things which we value are rarely eternal ones, O oh God. Teach us to let go of worldly temptations and to offer what resources we have, time, abilities, wealth, to your service. Bless these gifts we bring before you for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so at home I invite you to join together in praying together our Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. And give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as though we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing, the God of steadfastness and encouragement. Grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And as we, before we sing our closing hymn, I just want to say thank you for joining all together this morning in this way. To remember to join Diane Schultz for her Sunday school time on the Central Lutheran Sunday School Facebook page. So thanks to Diane for taking the time and, and joining us together 
as in our Sunday school ministry. And I want to thank um, Randy and, and Mike, the minister at Dramon and Good in Valley of the Shepherd, Dave and Michelle and Joanne for uh, contributing to this worship this morning. We go our way by singing, My Lord, What a Morning, hymn 438. Christian shout to wake the 